Welcome everybody, it's Matimus here with you today. I really appreciate you stopping by on today's naval ship video. We are going to be talking about the Admiral Kudnitsyov, which is unfortunately very difficult for me to say, and I do apologize to any of those Russian speakers out there that are listening to this video. Uh, I do try my best throughout this video to say the uh, correct pronunciation of this uh, ship's name, but I may fail miserably. Uh, so we are talking about quite a old aircraft carrier, I'm going to be honest with you here folks. Uh, it is dated and it's definitely earned its time to be replaced. Uh, unfortunately though, the Russian military in all its glory has got other plans going on in the background and it always seems to be in the highlight or the spotlight when it comes to military hardware replacement in the Russian public eye and you know worldwide too and a lot of us know about this aircraft carrier it's nothing new uh, pardon the pun uh, that this aircraft carrier really has done its time uh, it's time to be replaced so the heavy aircraft carrier cruiser also known as project 1143.5 or the Orel Kras, was constructed at the Nikolaev South Shipyard on the Black Sea in the Ukraine the Admiral Kitsnyov was launched in 1985 the second vessel of the class, the Vryag, was launched in 1988. Admiral Kutsnyov is the only aircraft carrier in the Russian Navy. China purchased an upgraded version of the Vryag from the Ukraine in 1998. The hull design is based on an earlier Admiral Grushkov, launched in 1982, but it is larger with a full load displacement of 58,500 tons compared to the 40,400 tons. The aircraft carrier supports a strategic missile carrying submarine, surface ship and maritime missile carrying aircraft of the Russian fleet. She holds a maximum crew of 1600 including 626 aircrew including 40 flagship staff. She has a total length of 284 meters which is not a gigantic ship but enough to at least hold a number of jets to pack a punch. The flight deck itself is around 14,700 meters squared, and aircraft takeoff is assisted by a bow ski jump angled at 12 degrees. The flight deck is equipped with arrestor wires to prevent the jets flying off the other end. Two starboard lifts carry the aircraft from the hangar to the flight deck. The ship has the capacity to support 16 Yakolev Yak 41M, or NATO codename as Freestyle, and 12 Sukhoi Su-27K, NATO codenamed Flanker, fixed-wing aircraft with a range of helicopters including 4 Kamov Ka-27LDs, NATO codenamed Helix, and 18 Kamov Ka-27PLOs with a long of 2 Ka-27Ss. The ship does carry missiles. It has granite anti-ship missile systems equipped with 12 surface-to-surface -surface missile launchers. The granite missile, NATO codenamed SSN-19 Shipwreck, kind of ironic, is reported to have a range greater than 400 kilometers and is capable of carrying either nuclear or conventional warheads, giving this ship a powerful punch if not just from the sky. The Kliknov Air Defense Missile System with 24 vertical launchers and 192 missiles defends the ship against anti-ship missiles, aircraft and surface ships. That is a lot of missiles guys to protect itself from and to be honest, it needs it. It does not have a huge flight crew uh, or a few huge flight sortie to defend itself and obviously it needs a little bit more punch than some of the other ships that we see in the NATO world uh, being used because it, it just doesn't have the capability to carry so many jets to be able to launch a counter-offensive or a defensive measures for the ship's uh, overall well-being. The system has a multi-channel electronically steered phase array radar and can achieve a firing rate of one missile every three seconds. Four targets can be engaged simultaneously in a 60 degrees by 60 degrees sector. The range of the system is 12 to 15 kilometers, which overall to me isn't that much and I was surprised to hear that number. I was honestly thinking it was going to be at least to the 20 to 25 kilometers. For those of you who are out there who are massive radar savvies, maybe I'm just talking out my butt, but it does seem like very dated technology to have, uh, you know, the range only at 12 to 15 kilometers, considering a lot of, you know, surface-based uh, missiles that can be launched from aircraft can be probably launched way beyond that range, I don't know, but it does seem a little lower number than I thought it would be. The ship does have a Cashtown air defense gun missile system combined as well, supplied by the Instrument Design Bureau. This provides defense against precise weapons including anti-ship and anti-radar missiles, also aircraft and some small sea targets. Very similar to the CIWS, or SeaWiz as a lot of people tend to call it, it's basically able to engage missiles that are coming at it at full speed. There are eight systems that are fitted, combining missile launchers, 30mm twin gun and radar optronic directors. 
The range of the laser beam riding missiles is from 1.5 kilometers to 8 kilometers. The guns themselves can fire 1,000 rounds a minute in a range of 0.5 kilometers to 1.5 kilometers. And finally, the ship is armed with six AK-630 AD 30mm anti-aircraft guns fitted all the way around the ship. So let's be honest here, guys, in terms of conventional munitions, this thing is packing a pretty severe punch when it comes to defending itself. How accurate those systems are is really hard to say. You've got to remember that, yes, they do have all these guns pointing out all over the place, but the biggest threat to a ship nowadays is anti-surface uh, missiles, you know, uh, anti-ship missiles. Some of those missiles coming in at some incredible speeds. If you don't have the kind of technology that can track and trace those missiles coming in, the 30mm and all that firepower is really to no use. And it's difficult to say how accurate their systems are, but I can almost guarantee the Russians probably have a good take on defending their own ships, especially a ship of this size. So I'm... Um, Got a good feeling they've invested enough financing and enough technology to say, yeah, we can definitely put a few anti-missile ships out of the sky if we need to. For sensors, the ship's radars include a DE-band air surface target acquisition radar, an F-band surface search radar, and a GH-band flight control radar. There's also an I-band navigation radar and four K-band fire control radars for the Kashtan air defense gun and missile systems. The ship's hull-mounted search and attack sonar operating in the medium and low frequency bands is capable of detecting torpedoes and submarines, which is, let's be honest here guys, the biggest threat to this ship overall. The anti-submarine warfare aircraft are equipped with surface search radar, dipping sonar, sonar boys, and magnetic anomaly detectors. And that is quite a tongue tied to try and say. We know for a fact that if this thing does come into combat, it's going to get hunted to death by submarines, and it seems as though defense of this thing in terms of submarine warfare is a very high contributing factor for the kind of equipment and the aircraft they're selecting for the ship. Obviously helicopters to protect it from those beautiful rubber coated beasts that are coming up from the seas. However, as much as she wants to defend herself, her overall role is to strike and engage targets using her aircraft on board. I mean, after all, she's an aircraft carrier. She's not there to sit back on her twiddling her thumbs with the aircraft on board waiting for subs to hunt her down, she's there to engage with those aircraft, strike precision targets very, very quickly, get them back on board and sail out of there. Um, you know, she's all, always going to be escorted by other ships. Uh, she is an old girl. She's not, you know, she's not in her early 20s, you know, she's an old lady. Um, and she deserves that, you know, protection because she just doesn't have the capability of punching fast through the oceans. Which brings me on to my next point, propulsion. The ship is conventionally powered and has eight boilers and four steam turbines, each producing 50,000 horsepower, driving four shafts with fixed pitch propellers. It's not a massive surprise in terms of propulsion that this ship is a lot faster and probably a lot more capable in terms of speed than some of the other bigger aircraft carriers out there. However, she does have a maximum speed of 29 knots and a range at that maximum speed of 3,800 miles. Her overall maximum range at a steady 18 knots is 8,500 miles. Now, we could fight this argument out to death between NATO uh, people and Russian people out there with the nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. I know a lot of people were very, very triggered when I talked about the Queen Elizabeth II aircraft carrier and her not being, you know, nuclear-powered. Uh, everybody has their own perspective on this. I honestly feel that it is a smarter move going for a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Um... I have my reasons, which I'm not going to talk about in this video today, and I will do a video on it in the future. But uh, I just feel that we are in the modern world now where we can refine this technology, nuclear technology, to power these aircraft carriers. We know it works. Uh, we know it's doing its job. And I think, you know, in the next 10, 20, 30 years, um, we could really refine it a lot better to try and make it, you know, safer and more efficient than what we're looking at for some of the you know, more primitive uh, diesel-powered and, you know, turbine-powered ships that we're seeing right now. I guess not turbine-powered, because they're all turbine-powered with nuclear ships, too. Uh, but you know what I'm trying to get at. Guys, she's an old girl. Um, she's not a ship that you really want to get in the way of, even though she's old. She has some, you know, some serious firepower behind her. I wouldn't get in her way if I was uh, any navy in the world there. But... She's been going for a while. She was ordered in 1981. Um, 
That's a long time ago, guys. Uh, she was launched in 1985, commissioned in 1990. Uh, she was retrofitted in May and August uh, 2015. That was when she pretty much came into active service and still currently today. Uh, overall, she does weigh 43,000 tons as a standard load and 61,390 tons as a max load. She can stay at sea for 45 days, which... I think is pretty impressive. You know, a month and a half of time at sea to deploy around the world in a range of around 8,500 kilometers is going to get you quite a bit of capability for launching precision strike packages with your aircraft. So my overall opinion of this ship is she's a workhorse. She's done her time. She requires to be replaced, honestly. But being that she's the only aircraft carrier of the Russian Navy, she really has to continue doing that work until they get a replacement. Unlike the UK that just kind of decided to scrap everything before we got a new one, uh, Russia is playing it safe and continuing her flowing for the next how many years. Uh, it has been said that they are cutting funding for repairing and modernizing this ship. Instead of the previously planned 50 billion rubles or $867 million for the work, they want to cut that in half. Uh, which makes it very difficult to keep a ship like this floating. It's not a small ship, you know, it requires a lot of maintenance. Uh, this is basically down to a lot of budgetary requirements that Russia are trying to cut down on things. Uh, it's interesting to hear which, you know, with the Russian defense industry, you'd always expect them to just pump money into it. I'm looking forward to in the next 10 to 20 years what Russia will do in producing this potential super, super carrier. You know, just like the United States and, and the UK are trying to do. I think it's time to do it now, Russia. <laughs> I really do. Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching today. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video and at least learned a little bit about this aircraft carrier. If you did enjoy, leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this Russian beast. Uh, do you think it is also time to replace and upgrade this behemoth uh, to try and get a new and more updated aircraft carrier and maybe even a new, more updated aircraft to go on there? We have discussed this a little bit in some previous videos. Go check it out. I uh, discussed the difference and sort of comparison between the F-18 and uh, the beautiful MiGs that they do still have on these aircraft. So go check that out. Um, but please, guys, if you, if you want to support my channel, I'd really appreciate you go check out my Patreon page. It is in the description box below. Go check it out. Uh, I can't thank you all enough for allowing me to continue doing what I do with the support you've been sending me in terms of donations to that account. So thank you so, so much. If you want to follow me on Facebook, feel free to do so. Facebook recently told me to change my name. Apparently, I'm not allowed to call myself Matmus now. I have to call myself Matt Matmus. I must have a first name. Otherwise, I will trigger the Facebook community. It's absolutely ridiculous. This is why I hate social media. Um, but anyway, stay tuned for more upcoming military reviews and topics. And if you do have anything you want to request me to do, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below, and I will try my best to get to there. All the best. Have a wonderful day, and... Bye-bye.